Hello and welcome to Poseidon Tech. Today we will check a very cheap alternative to NAS. In most of the cases we need a NAS in order to take backup of our laptop, share files through our mobile phone, and play some media content from the TV box. Of course, we can do many other things with a NAS, but today we will focus on these three things. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage and in most of the cases it's just a small box where we can insert our hard disk drives. It's a very compact and robust solution, but apart from that it's also expensive. An alternative solution is to use a Raspberry Pi and create your own NAS. For this, you will need a chip cable and an SSD drive. The software we will need in order to create our own NAS is Open Media Board. So let's see how you can build your own NAS based on a Raspberry Pi and which of these two solutions is best for your needs. As we said, our solution will be based on Open Media Vault. So first, we need to download it. We go to openmediavault.org and then go to download. There, select Raspberry Pi images and download the relevant file. Once we download the file, we need a program to write the image to the SSD. In our case, we use Etcher. Once the SSD card is ready, we insert the Raspberry Pi and boot it up while connected to the network. Next, we need to connect to the OpenMediaVault web interface through the browser by entering the IP address that has been assigned to. Default username is admin and password OpenMediaVault. From the menu on the left side, we can reach all the configuration pages. First, on the general settings we can configure the port and change the default password. Settings can be found and changed from the relevant page selected on the left side. Very important is the plugin section where we can find and add additional plugins to our Open Media Vault installation. On this session, under storage, we can see the SSD drive we have connected to the Raspberry Pi. It has been mounted under Dev SDA. Next, on file system settings, we need to create a new one under our SSD drive. Leave all settings on default. After a while, file system is ready and online. Next, we need to mount it by pressing the relevant button on the top. Press apply to save all changes. Once we finish with disks and file system, we need to create a user. This can be done by pressing the button on the top. Select name and password and press save. Multiple users can be added by following the same procedure. When finished, press apply in order to save changes. Since no shared folder privileges are assigned to user, we need to configure this as well. We navigate to shared folder and create a new one by pressing the add button. Give it a name, in our case time machine folder, since we'll use this folder for this purpose. Select device and press save. We follow the same procedure in order to create an additional shared folder for general purpose. In this case we name it shared folder. Don't forget to press apply in order to save changes.
Now we need to assign user's privilege to each folder by selecting the shared folder and press the relevant button at the top. Once completed, we can check if everything is ok by selecting user and check privilege assigned. Next, we need to navigate to the Apple filing session under services and enable service by pressing relevant toggle button. Don't forget to enable also the option allow plain passwords. In the shares tab, we need to add shares. We add both shared folders we created previously. Don't forget to enable option Time Machine Support for the folder that you want to use for the Time Machine Backup. Don't forget to press Apply in order to save changes. Now it's time to jump to the Mac in order to enable Time Machine. Go to Settings, select Time Machine and then press Select Disk button. The shared folders we created previously should appear here. Select it and press Use Disk. More than one folder for Time Machine can be used. The user credentials we created assigned should be used and we are ready. Our shared folder Raspberry Pi is used for Time Machine backups on our MacBook. Next, it's time to check the connection towards our general purpose shared folder. As you can see, it is appearing as expected. User that assigned to this folder should be used and we are ready to go. Now let's add SSH connection to our Open Media Vault installation. In order to do so, we need to navigate back to Web Interfaces and more specific to SSH section under Services. There we need to enable service and allow root access. Now, using a terminal, we can have SSH access to the Raspberry Pi. After first connection, user should change password. A very useful functionality is to provide SSH access via web browser. In order to enable this, the SSL in a box plugin must be installed under plugin section. Select it and press install. After successful installation, the relevant section under services appears. So navigate to cell in the box section, enable and press apply to save changes. Next, open new SSH section by pressing web client button. Now it's time to create a new folder in order to share our media file. Follow same procedure in order to create a new shared folder and don't forget to add privileges. Samba share can be enabled as well by selecting SMP section under services. After press enable and win support button, the shared folder must be selected under shared tabs. Using the same procedure, FTP and NFS access can be enabled as well.
as you can see now, the same shared folder is available via different protocols according to our settings. Another very common usage of NAS is for torrent download. In order to add this functionality, the relevant plugin must be installed. So navigate to plugin section and search for transmission BT plugins. Select it and install it. Next, we need to create a shared folder for torrents following the procedure we described above. Make sure that the user transmission has privileges on this folder. After successful installation, under Service, we can find the BitTorrent section. Enable Service and select Shared Folder we created for this purpose before. Next, we need to enable Web Interface for the Torrent Service under RPC tab. Remember the port we will need it to access the web interface. Now open a new tab, navigate to the port shown before. Use default credentials to connect. Our torrent client is ready and we can add new torrents. Now it's time to check access to our Open Media Vault from mobile phone. In order to connect, we need File Explorer app which can be downloaded from App Store in case of an iPhone. Once app installed, we need to create a new connection. Press the plus button and navigate to the bottom. There the shared folder must appear, select it and connect using the created credentials. Create a test file in order to check connection. Now check on the Mac in order to confirm that the file created from the iPhone is accessible in the shared folder. Following the same procedure, media files stored on the shared folder and open media vault can be executed on TV Box. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please press like and consider subscribing to our channel. See you on the next video.